Welcome back to another episode of What the F- Does This Thing Do? So today, uh, I am going to be talking about Slicer. My name is Plague, and this is part of a series where we talk about every single effect on this device. Slicer is available on everything, which is fantastic. Very lucky for that. And we'll just get right into the parameters. So we have the pattern, the rate, and the depth. So pattern it has 20 patterns in it. So it's P1 through P20. Some patterns fade in or out. Others are just straight cutting. Now, what does each pattern do? Well, just like my dynamics tutorial and a couple others, I have this made this handy chart to be able to help you visually see what each one of the slicers do. So on the left, you'll see the pattern or the P number. The middle is how it is sliced per cycle. So and this is going to be relative to your BPM. So it, I'll give you an example. So if I have a one, one beat, let's do it for one beat. And we'll do 120 depth, and we'll just do a pattern of P1. So if I record something, uh, uh, so this is a BPM of 148. So it sounds like it's a half a measure. Yeah, so it's a half note. So each cycle is it's cutting that relative to your BPM, meaning that if you speed it up, it's also going to speed up the slicer or slow it down. So the pattern is going to be relative to your BPM. The next column over is what it looks visually. So the black, if you see a black segment, that means it's on. So the slicer is like, it's cutting that. So in this case, we'll have, let's say a sound. uh, And then we'll do a P3. So if it's white, that means it's that area of whatever the track is is missing so if you see black that is your piece your music your sound whatever and whatever is missing from that so the white portion is what's being cut so in this case we have a p3 we look over on the pattern see p3 and it says on for a half note and it is or excuse me a quarter note plus an eighth note so a quarter and an eighth and then it's off for just an eighth note and it repeats that twice and that's one cycle. So over on the right hand side, you'll see each like line is an eighth note. So it's on for or it's off for three eighth notes, and then the slicer cuts it for an eighth note, and then it goes back on for another three eighth notes, and then cuts it again. Uh, 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 uh. So P five is on for a quarter plus an eighth, then it's off for an eighth, on for an eighth. Off for an eighth, on for an eighth, off for an eighth. So if we look at the the right on the visual, so we should hear it go, uh, 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 uh. So let's hear what that sounds like. Uh, 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 uh. And that's exactly what we hear. So we'll do another one. P, let's do a P8. So it's on for an eighth, then off for an eighth. And it's, that, that cycle repeats four times. And it fades out with each cut. And you can see that visualized on the right. The fading of the colors is the volume. So with P10, it's the same as P8, but double in length. So it fades out, but it, at the end, it fades back in after half a cycle. So the first on is the loudest. And then the, la- the fifth on, or the fifth chop, is the quietest as it fades back in. Feel free to screenshot that, share it, whatever. I I made this, so you can distribute it however you want. Tape it into your forehead, whatever. 
let's talk about the rate. So the rate is again relative to your BPM and it's best to use the note values. So then it's cutting it at the actual track. So with the rate, it's relative to what your BPM is. So whatever your BPM is, in this case 141, it's going to cut it to that. There's also numerical values too, which you can use that if you want to be a little off sync. Another thing about the rate is that I really like the dotted and triplets. Those seem to produce very interesting kind of cuts, very glitchy. So, but you can use whatever rate that you want. Next is depth. Now, depth is interesting because it normally goes from like 0 to 100 with a lot of these, but this actually goes up to 120. So it's within 0 to 120. 0 is no cutting at all. And then 100 is a really nice place for me because the cutting is not as abrupt. Whereas 120, it cuts it so hard that it almost sounds louder on the ends. So I'll give you an example with this track. But if you want something more subtle, you can turn the depth down. Notice how it is different from the tremolo, which if you check out the tremolo tutorial, yeah, I talk about the differences between those two. But the higher depth cut the sound much more abrupt. And by the way, this is controlled by the track effects knob. So one thing you can do with a slicer is you can change patterns mid track. You can do it for a second drop to really change out the pattern. Like slicer is really all like really, really useful to create a change up in the way that the song is structured. So you can do that for the first drop, have like a P1, but then the second drop you can have as a P6 or P7, like even mid, like mid thing that you're doing. So like in this example here, In general, the slicer has segments or categories of slicing. There's four categories. There's P1 through P7, which are straightforward. It can be contained within the measure. P8 through P12 involve fading, but they also can be contained within the measure. P13 to P16 have shorter cycles and they desync with the measure. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just they're going to, it's going to be a short segment of a cycle and they're just gonna keep repeating that cycle over and over, but that may not necessarily align with what your, oh my God, whatever your tempo is or the measure that you're doing things on. P17 through P20 sound really interesting with numer numerical values as their rate. So if you do the numerical values, these are going to be much faster. And again, because it's not tempo synced, it doesn't, doesn't matter too much about the rate. Well, it kind of does, but it, it can create some really interesting textures. Another thing that you can do with a slicer is create hi-hats, like really fast, rapid hi-hats. So you just go and you can create. So for example, if you have hi-hats here, and then you can record those. So now you have a cool hi-hat. The slicer is based on the tempo and where the metronome is. 
So it calculates where it needs to be in its cycle based on the measure. For example, if the pattern is on for a beat and off for a beat and you're ha you start at halfway through a beat, it will start on, it'll be on for a half a beat, the remaining part, and then off for a half a beat, if that makes sense. So depending on where you are in your measure, if it's say a one measure length cycle and you start it at the second beat, then it's going to only do half of its cycle. And then once it, the new measure starts, then it'll restart and do go through its cycle again. So as fast slicers can make for interesting sound changes. I've demonstrated this in the tremolo tutorial. We'll do a slicer, but at a very high rate. And we'll hear how this sounds. You can kind of hear the interference with the slicer and the actual panning delay there. That's just one example. So fast slicers can make your sound really interesting. It almost is not like, it doesn't even sound like it's cutting it. it it's more that it's just adding a texture to your track or whatever you're doing. Turning the slicer on and off can even make for some more interesting patterns. So like I'll do another panning delay. particular patterns uh, that I want to point out. So P5 and P7 are just opposites of each other. So if you like P5, try P7 or vice versa. P13 is really cool. If you have a P13 and you put it on a eighth note, what that does is it will give you, you can do like crazy like melodies. So for example, this track Blindfold it uses by M Matei uses two MK1s, but you can achieve the same effect if you use a slicer on a P P13 with the eighth note. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to go oh, into the microphone and it's going to slice it in a very particular way. The way that this is broken down is it will fill each one of these positions. So it'll first fill this, uh, each, if you break down your track via eighth notes, it fills in the first eighth note, skips the next two, fills in the fourth eighth note, skips two, fills in the seventh, skip two, but at that point you've come back to the beginning. So now you're on two, five, then eight, then comes back around three, six, and it does one again. So I'm going to do four notes. So what it's going to end up doing is it's going to record three dun 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 around this thing and then it's going to harmonize with itself as I go around another time. So what that ends up sounding like is this. So what that ends up sounding like is this. Cool. So that's how it gets filled in. You can do all kinds of crazy melodies with this. And it, again, it's to whatever your tempo is, is going to be the speed at which it does that. If you want, if you want to fill in specific like piano notes that are each an eighth note, just f use this line here to figure out where your note needs to be and do that with your voice at, again, using the tempo to kind of figure out where things are going. So another pattern is you can go back and forth between a P5 
P1 and a P2 to double and half the rate quickly. So whatever your rate happens to be, if you want to make it cut it in half, just go to a P2. If you want to double the rate, just go to a P1. So it's fun to play around with going between a P1 and a P2. One last thing is if you want it, I have not tested this, so I don't know how well this will work, but patterns P13 to P20, how they desync with the tempo. I'm guessing that if you use the rate, the numerical values, you might be able to get it to sync to your BPM and get it to sync for a longer period of time. My assumption is that it'll eventually desync over time, but you can use the numerical values to kind of keep it at least within pace of whatever your tempo happens to be. I would just, at least it's worth, it might be worth trying, but in any case, that is the slicer tutorial. Very well loved by many bleep boxers and loopers out there. So yeah, let's check out a track that uses a couple different slicers and hear the, how that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's ridiculous.